In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Area Effector 2D. So to start off with, I'm going to come up to Assets, Create, come down to the Sprites, and I'm going to go ahead and create a square. And it throws it into my Assets folder. I'll just keep it as square. I'm just going to go ahead, drag that into my scene, uh, say right here. Now, I need a collider on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and use a box collider, 2D. And then we'll go ahead and add that area effector, 2D. Well, there is, there is no 3D version, so. <laughs> All right, so to start off with, let's get rid of the errors. Uh, it goes ahead and tells us that we need to make sure that we have the use by effector enabled on our collider. So we'll go ahead, we'll take that. Then, of course, we get one more that pops up that says we need to make sure this is set to a trigger. All right, those are gone. We've covered box colliders in a different video. So let's go ahead. We'll take a look at the area effector. The first two options here are the same as the last effector we'll look at. So we'll look at those last. Let's go ahead and start off with the force. So I'm going to go and make this a little bit bigger. Uh, up there. Make it a little bit wider. Uh, I'm actually going to move it a bit too. Let's actually just snap it. Right there. And I'm going to go ahead and make it just slightly transparent, just so we can see through it better, so we can see what's going on with it. There we go. All right, so use global angle. When we're down here setting the force angle, it's going to be related to the X on the, the game object, so it's local X. So if I set it to zero, it's pushing this way. Or if I were to go ahead and rotate it, And then take a look at the local X. We'll switch over that way. Uh, if I were to set the angle to zero, which it still is, now it's pushing this way. By enabling use global angle, zero is always left on the global axis. So we'll go ahead, we'll switch back to global. So it'll always be that, regardless of what angle this is at. So let's have a quick demonstration of that. I'm gonna go ahead, take this, set it back to zero. I'm going to take the force angle. I'm going to set it to 90. I'm not going to use global angle. So 90 degrees would be straight up. So just think back to your old high school geometry classes. We start at zero here. And as we go along, this is 90 degrees. We keep going. This way here is 180. Down is 270. Then we come back around to 360 and zero. The force magnitude is how hard of a force is going to be pushing in that direction. In this case, it's up. And the force variation just allows you to add some sort of random variance. So if I were to go ahead and set both of these to 10, that means the force pushing up is going to be random between 10 and 20 because it just adds them together. Now I'm just going to go with 0 and oh, let's do 20. And let's take the box, move it up a little bit higher, over a bit more. Let's hit play. And there we go. We have this force, force pushing it upwards. If I go ahead and jump into it, there we go. I jump into it. And apparently my mass is enough to keep me down at the bottom. It lifts me up a bit. You see when I jump into it, I get a little bit of a lift. Let's go ahead and increase that a bit. Uh, what are we at here? Let's try a 50, just straight up 50. Let's see how much that affects me. Missed. There we go. That affects me and the box. <laughs> and of course I can't jump because I'm not grounded. So there we go. Now if we were to go ahead and rotate it, uh, I should just do it this way. Let's do 90 degrees. And I like to keep the, the arrows on just so you can see it better. And we'll stick to the local. So 90 degrees is actually pushing this way now. So you can see it pushing me. There we go. And if I were to go ahead and switch over to the global again. There we go, pushes me back up. Then we turn it off, shoots me to the left. Great. So I'm going to readjust this back up. There we go. 
So with force target, if you have it set to rigid body, it's going to be applying that force to your center of mass, so there's no rotation added to you. But if you go ahead and switch it over to collider, if you have an odd shape or more than one collider on your game object, it can actually cause it to spin when it hits and gets inside. But of course, you can also control that with the dampening. So with drag, let's go ahead, we'll put the drag up to five. And if we go ahead and jump into it now, I move slower while I'm going through it. There we go. And I can't jump on top of it, so let's jump right into it. Well, I can move out of it. And if, say, we crank the drag up to, say, 50. Make it a little bit more extreme. And look how slow I move. Now it's kind of like a UFO coming to beat me up. <laughs> Woo! A slow elevator ride. All right, so you understand how drag works. Angular drag, the exact same thing, except it affects the rotation, so it makes things rotate slower. And let's come back up to the collider mask. So if you don't have use collider mask enabled, by default, this affects every layer. And everything is on a layer, because everything starts off at the default. But if you want to get specific and only affect certain layers, we can go ahead and turn it on. And by default, it is still everything. Uh, let's go ahead and make it affect only um, stuff on the default layer. Oops, we'll go pick nothing. Now let's pick default. I'm going to put my cube on the default. I'll take my player, put him on something that isn't default. It really doesn't matter what. I'll just throw him. Oh, let's just make a new one. I don't want a player layer, but for demonstration purposes, that's fine. I can always come and get rid of it later. So again, I'll select my player, put him on the player layer. Yes, we'll affect everything under him, so it's all on the same layer. It is on default, so if we go ahead and start it now, if we take a look, this only affects the default. We'll start it up. It's bouncing. I come by, I jump into it. It's not doing anything for me. Uh, of course, if I switch it back to everything, boom, there I go. And nothing. <laughs> well, there we go. We have area effectors. It should be actually kind of fun to see those included inside your projects. There's kind of really cool things you can do. You can also use this as a cannon as well. As, you know, turn it to the side, say at 45 degree angles. Or go ahead and just set the force angle here. And as the player runs into it, it can boost them. You can also just have this up in the air. Uh, don't even bother putting a sprite on it. So he doesn't even know it's there. And when he goes to jump and he hits into it, it gives him like a huge boost into one direction or something. There's so many little things you can do with this. I think it'd be pretty cool. But anyway, for those uh, students that are in my class, I expect to see these used in your 2D projects, at least for the one due this week. And for everyone else that's just watching on YouTube, well, have fun with it. And I'll see everyone else in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>